Hello, my name is Tony Chan and uh, I'm at the OpenStack Summit 2017 in uh, Sydney, Australia. With me today is Radesh from Red Hat, uh, who's responsible for the Red Hat's OpenStack uh, strategy, right? In, in the past year, the OpenStack Foundation has focused a lot of effort in uh, developing functionality and features for communication service providers. What has Red Hat done in this area? That's an excellent question. You know, first of all, we pride ourselves in being able to work with customers and prioritize a set of features and functionality that they require, and then work across multiple upstream communities so that the innovation shows up in a production-ready uh, format. So specific to service providers, for example, features such as SRIOV, VM-aware, uh, uh, VLAN-aware VMs, or IPv6, are all capabilities that we have brought not just to OpenStack layer, but also to Linux as well as KVM layers so that when it comes to deploying an infrastructure, the customers get all the piece parts required to be successful. Which is why if you look across the globe, you know, carriers such as Verizon, et cetera, are betting on our Red Hat OpenStack platform to power their NFE infrastructure. Okay. The OpenStack Foundation, and, and specifically also NFE, uh, has gained a lot of momentum within the service provider space. What do you think is going to happen in the next five years in this whole uh, development? Five years is really a long time, mm -hmm. and uh, we clearly are at a crossing the chasm moment when it comes to NFE adoption itself. Meaning, the early adopters have proven that it's possible to get ROI out of it, not as much about reducing costs, it's about driving agility and bringing more services into a place, et cetera. So with the spirit of sort of looking at the uh, you know, uh, five year horizon and making uh, predictions, let me make five predictions and let's see you know, how things pan out in the five years, okay? Since we are recording, I'm sure we can come, you know, check back later. First prediction I would make is that in five years, NFE would have become totally mainstream and in that it would have moved from core to edge as well, as well as radio, et cetera, right? So that's the first prediction I'm making. The second uh, and related uh, uh, prediction I would be comfortable making would be that 5G would have become a truly uh, use case every day that customers are benefiting from, um, and the standards would have been well established, and powering the 5G use cases would be NFV, uh, based, you know, networked uh, 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 or virtualized network infrastructure, basically, right? So, uh, so that's the uh, prediction I would make on the, from the 5G perspective. A third one, maybe in terms of technology, what technologies will go into uh, NFE? We are beginning to talk about containerized uh, uh, services, etc. I think in five years' time containerized microservices uh, would become the default when it comes to NFE rollouts across the globe. And so, maturation of not just the technology, but also the operational tooling required to stand up that environment and manage that right. will become very, very mature by that time frame. Um, a fourth prediction I would like to venture would be um, the use of machine learning and artificial intelligence when it comes to uh, such a containerized NFE deployment wherein you're not as much dependent on human power to fix networks and uh, issues and challenges that come with software, but more of an autonomous learning environment that will be created whereby self-learning networks will be the one powering you know, amazing use cases across the globe. So that would be the uh, fourth uh, uh, prediction from my side. And to round it out, uh, maybe from a selfish perspective, I would reckon that in five years time frame, Red Hat truly would have become the underlying core fabric for telco revolution, delivering 100% open uh, infrastructure. It would be a combination of OpenStack, containers, Kubernetes, and who knows, some more other technologies that will be uh, coming along in our journey. So hopefully that makes sense in right. terms of predictions. Okay, uh, you hit a lot of points there. Uh, things like containers, uh, artificial intelligence, um, open source. Within these uh, elements that you envision, um, obviously I don't expect Red Hat to be in all of them. So you must have a, a pretty extensive partnership program to, uh, to, to enable this vision. Um, can you comment a little bit about your ecosystem? Absolutely. So one of the things that we fundamentally 
view as within our DNA is to be able to partner with the whole ecosystem so that we're doing two things. One is to catalyze innovation in areas where we probably are not the experts, but we depend on our partners to influence us as well as we influence them so that together we are moving the state of the art in terms of innovation. So that's one area of focus. And second and equally important is bringing the peace of mind value proposition to customers so that when they are mixing and matching solutions from us as well as from our partners, it's not the first time that the customers are deploying that in their environment, right? So on both counts, if you were to just look at the NFV ecosystem that we have built together today, be it from a, a hardware ecosystem perspective, compute, storage, and networking, we work with pretty much all the like, large vendors that are out there in offering certified solutions, or if you go up the stack in terms of VNF providers, uh, uh, depending on the use cases, pretty much all the VNF providers are either certified or are in the process of getting certified to our Red Hat OpenStack platform. Or if you go all the way up to the management and orchestration layer, we work with the Mano providers also so that the full deployment that uh, a customer is going for is something that has been tested in the labs and the vendors are standing behind beyond the fact that as need arises for newer newer features and capabilities, we are also innovating, co-creating with the partners to make sure that we're the, moving the needle uh, when it comes to what is state of the art. So, in a nutshell, partner ecosystem as well as innovation with partner ecosystem is a fundamental characteristics of how Red Hat goes to market. Okay, uh, I'm going to throw in one more question. Uh, as somebody who's, uh, I guess, you know, entrenched within the community itself and working very closely with OpenStack, what's what's you know your top priority for the coming year? Uh, I mean, are there things that is on the top of your mind that you really have to address? Excellent. I would call out maybe three things. First is uh, operational management because uh, compared to you know, let's say five years ago, the question around is OpenStack going to be real? Is it going to be used? All that have been answered. You're seeing uptake across multiple verticals, including telco, of course. But then now the focus is on operational management of you know, the infrastructure. You're going to live with that for a long, long period of time, right? So that's, I think, uh, mm. first area of focus for us. Um, second is, related to the um, operational management itself, how do we bring in more of analytics and um, automation that can actually help manage that infrastructure without having a human element into it is going to be an ongoing area of focus uh, for us. And the third one is something that we touched upon earlier, which is how do we continue to make sure that a vibrant partner ecosystem continues to deliver on innovation as well as peace of mind value proposition. These would be the top three uh, uh, priorities that we will continue to focus on. Great. Radesh, thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure, thank you.